The clip starts off with a simple two shot of Steve and Ben in a conversation with equal emphasis in the frame. Following over the shoulder shots of Steve and Ben highlights the conversation and the high and low angles reflect Steve's position of sitting on the wall and Ben at the pedestrian level. This could reflect on how the characters perceive each other in terms of power over the other, or highlight what the audience already concludes about the respective characters from their exposure to them so far in the film. Steve being shot at a higher angle implies that he has more power over Ben who is at the lower angle, needing to look up at Steve to talk to him. The road scene immediately afterwards shot through point of view with upbeat music suggests action and time elapsing. Though the view is not disclosed, it is inferred that this shot transitions into a scene with high action and it is important because of the fast forward point of view shot. This makes time go by faster for the viewer to something that is worth paying close attention to, which is Steve at the batting cages. You happy, Ben? Ben's shot behind the batting cage fence emphasizes his inactive role in the scene as a bystander. I'm serious. You happy? I don't know. Ben's answer to Steve's somewhat rhetorical question affects Steve because the camera stops its frequent shot changes to just simple shots to take away the distraction from Steve's reaction. It's the most truthful thing I've ever heard. At least you have a choice. You're not happy? You're very happy. Ben's depth of field shot suggests that both Ben and the audience should not take Steve's word for being happy and let their own opinions of Steve's character up till now be the judge of whether or not he is being truthful. Isn't it obvious? I have everything. The following scene is quite significant. First, it shows how Ben's skepticism over Steve's prior response has blurred out Steve's discourse that's supposed to support why Steve is happy. Secondly, the lack of focus on Steve can allow the audience to listen more carefully to what Steve is saying and perhaps identify that outline of a figure to be themselves, relating to the shallow accomplishments that Steve has, which are supposed to be significant but are implied to be just expected for someone like Steve, the Asian American high school Loving student. Parents. Top grades, Ivy League scholarships, of course, Stephanie, of course, right there, that's it. So fucking happy I can't stop it. Steve doesn't think his accomplishments are really meaningful, but only to fulfill his role of being an accomplished student for his parents. This is significant in that it alludes to the expected role of Asian Americans by their parents who expect academic excellence from their children, which the audience can identify with. Why not? It's a never-ending cycle. Steve is helpless in the never-ending cycle shown by the constant repetition of hitting the ball. Though it seems like Steve is talking, the scenes show that he isn't, further emphasizing the discrepancy between how happy he's supposed to be and how he is not. When you got everything you want, what's left? You can't settle for being happy, that's a fucking trap. Steve narrating this scene instead of speaking shows that he is trapped in the cycle. You gotta take life into your own hands, do whatever it takes to break the cycle. That's what it is, breaking the cycle. I envy you. Ben's response with a smile denotes the end of Steve's somewhat philosophical sequence, so to speak. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> The what's bring the subject into a lighter note again, however, Ben's laughter shows his disbelief of Steve's predicament of having everything but is not happy. But the scenes also reminds the audience that the two characters are still young boys growing up and trying to find meaning for themselves in the end. What? What?